You guys give up? Oh yeah, thirsty for more. <laughs> Welcome to Trimming the Movie Fat, the podcast where we trim films from franchises that don't belong. I'm Stephen Nicholson. And I'm Paul Nicholson. And we're defending our homes as we take on the wet bandits, careless parents, awful sequels, and Donald Trump cameos. It's the six movies in the Home Alone franchise. Which movies will survive the elaborate traps of Kevin McAllister? The original? Holiday Heist? The Kevin List Part 3, the recent Home Alone, in fact, Home Sweet Home Alone, that's easy to say. Keep listening to find out. We'll also share some Home Alone movie facts, provide an overview of each movie, and share our thoughts on each. Joining us on the sleigh ride down the stairs is my youngest son, Ben. So, Paul, do you you have a favourite scene from the Home Alone movies? Probably when he's, in the first one, when he's moving the the people and it's like some of the bandits outside are looking and they see the silhouettes. Uh, and the music and everything. So that's probably my favourite scene. I think it's quite clever. Yeah, one of mine too. Um, m- maybe my all-time favourite because it always just makes me laugh is in part two where he's in the hotel and they kind of redo the scene from the first one where he's playing the video, the gangster video. Get down on your knees mm. and tell me you love me. Uh, when he's, Filthy animal. When he's got, the, uh, he's got the hotel staff there and they think, it, you know, obviously he's shooting uh, that always makes me laugh I think that's great uh, Tim Curry is brilliant in that scene that's right Tim Curry's in it yeah. that's right yeah the original Pennywise the clown um, yeah okay. from the it yeah let's move on and share some interesting movie facts so maybe kick us off here um, so in Pulp Fiction when Uma Furman's character is having an overdose it looks like John Travolta sticks a needle in her to revive her I remember in the cinema watching that, everybody was like, oh, just waiting on, yeah. on, on him doing that. Uh, but actually, did you know that Travolta pulled the needle out of Uma Furman um, and the film was run backwards to reverse the action? Yeah, because I thought that, because we saw that at the cinema at the same time, didn't we? Yeah. So there we go. Um, it was, uh, yeah, the film didn't run back in reverse. Um, so, Paul, do you right. got a movie fact yeah. you can share? After... Uh, Ratatouille came out in 2007 obviously Ratatouille is about the chef and the little rat going under his hat and stuff and after the success of the film uh, kids everywhere asked their parents can can we get one I promise I'll take care of it at least one domestic pet chain so sales of pet rats jumped 50% after the movie's release we wonder how many of those rats immediately became parental responsibilities. <laughs> mm-hmm. oh, that's not a pet I would want, that's for sure. So let's move on and talk about some interesting Home Alone movie facts. So I'll maybe kick us off. Uh, so did you guys know that Robert De Niro turned down the role of Harry, one of the wet bandits in Home Alone? Yeah, so rather than Joe Pesci, Robert Nero. You can't actually imagine anyone but Joe Pesci playing the character. No, they, those two characters were in Rage and Bull, weren't they? Yeah, they've been in um, a yeah. number of movies together. Casino, Goodfellas, to name but two. But yeah, yeah they've right. been in uh, a number of movies. Oh, of course, more recently, The Irishman. That's right, yeah. Mm-hmm. The Godfather. Eh, sorry, not The Godfather. Uh, it's funny because to think you get two different films, you know, with Joe Pesci you had, had done Lethal Weapon 2 the year before Home Alone and the year he done Home Alone he did Goodfellas as well so it's right. quite funny, like totally different character. Very different movies 
Uh, so have you got an interesting home loan fact, Paul? Yeah, I remember reading this at the time. Actually, it's quite a good fact. Mm-hmm. Apparently, at the, at the time when the film, well, when the film was being made, uh, Joe Pesci obviously plays Harry. He deliberately avoided Macaulay Culkin on set because he wanted he wanted Macaulay Culkin to think he was mean. So, like, if he was around him and was being nice to him, he felt that would ruin the performance. So he kind of kept his distance so that Macaulay Culkin would be frightened of him and, and that would come across better in the, the finished film. Didn't know that. Mm. Home Alone is a series of American Christmas family comedy films originally created by John Hughes and directed by, well, the first two were directed by Chris Columbus. Uh, Rayo Gosnell directed number three, Rod Daniel number four, and Peter Hewitt number five, with the most recent being directed by Dan Mazer. Uh, the films revolve around the adventures surrounding children who find themselves alone during the holiday season and are faced with the challenge of defending their family's house or themselves from invading burglars and criminals. So the six films are Home Alone, Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, Home Alone 3, Home Alone 4, Taking Back the House, uh, Home Alone, The Holiday Heist, and Home Sweet Home Alone. So the three theatrically released movies, so one to three, have grossed uh, 914 million at the worldwide box office, that's uh, US dollars. And the original was nominated for two Academy Awards, uh, and they were for Best Original Score for John Williams, (laughs) yet another (laughs) nomination for John Williams, and Best Original Song for Somewhere in My Memory. Available on video for your home viewing pleasure. Another Christmas in the trenches. Give the gift that will make everyone laugh through the holidays. The entire Home Alone collection. Excellent. Everyone will love Home Alone. Ah! Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. Ah! Yes! Home Alone 3. And for the first time ever, Home Alone 4. It's four times the fun. It's showtime. Four times the laughs. Four comedies your family will enjoy watching again. And again. Buy the Home Alone collection on DVD today. You should do it more often. When the McAllister family left on their Christmas vacation... Did we miss the flight? No, you just made it. They forgot one small thing. Have yourself... I have a terrible feeling. Did you lock up? Yeah. Do we set the timers on the lights? Mm Mm-hmm. What else could we be forgetting? Our troubles will be ours. Kevin! Ah! Home Alone. Police in the northern suburbs are on the lookout for a pair of burglars who are calling themselves the Wet Bandits. We know that you're in there. It's Santa Claus and it's Elf. Get off my property. This is my house. I have to defend it. Where's your mother? My mom's in the car. Where's your father? He's at work. What about your brothers and sisters? I'm an only child. Where do you live? Can't tell you that. Why not? Because you're a stranger. He's a kid. I mean, what can a kid do to us? The kids are stupid. I know I was. You still are, Marv. This is it. Ow! I don't care if I have to get out on your runway and hitchhike. I am going to get home to my son. Ah! Yes! Ah! Ah! Where are you, you little creep? I'm gonna kill that kid! Why did you take your shoes off? Why are you dressed like a chicken? Gus Polinski, Polka King of the Midwest. If you have to get to Chicago, we'll gladly drive you. Hey, guys. Yesterday, he was just a kid. 
But tonight, he's a home security system. You guys give up? Oh, yeah, thirsty for more. From John Hughes. You know, I got a feeling this is going to be your best Christmas ever. A family comedy without the family. <laughs> home Alone. Are you here all alone? I'm eight years old. You think I'd be here alone? I don't think so. Directed by Chris Columbus, coming November 16th. So how you doing? Good. You happy about this success? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah, all in a day's work, isn't it? Yeah. They tell me that you're trying to gain a little weight, huh? Yeah. What are you doing? Why is that? You look um, real good. I'm very skinny. I weigh about 62 pounds. Like when kids in my class weigh about 97, so they outweigh me by about oh. like 30 pounds. Take you to Radu and bulk you up. Yeah. <laughs> you, me, and Cindy together will be working out. <laughs> you from New York City? Yes. How do they find you for all of these uh, movies I, and things? I have an agent. Uh-huh. Yeah. Since you were a little baby or? Uh, since I was six. Since you were six. Did you want to go into the business or did your mom and dad think it would be a good thing for you? How did it happen? Uh, well, it just kind of popped up. Like, my friend, well, she was the stage manager. So, like, um... At a Broadway show, though, right? Or off is it Broadway. Off Broadway. Yeah. And, um... Um, well, they needed a six-year-old kid. Well, I was six then, so um, I went over, auditioned, and got that play. So um, people saw me, like like directors and stuff like that saw me. So I auditioned, and I got like movies and stuff like that. It's unbelievable. Who's your agent? Because <laughs> we could use him, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Of course, that old man is not a mass murderer, and I have a question, that whole scene about the little boy feeling bad about himself, he's obviously the most wonderful kid in the whole picture. The slapstick with the burglars in the picture, that's predictable. I could accept the premise of the whole film, I'll grant him that, but I just don't think a bright enough script was written with the kid being maybe more frightened than he would be and maybe even more clever. Writer-producer John Hughes and his director Chris Columbus have made a sort of a pre-teen Ferris Bueller's day off, and the formula is wearing thin on me. I I think I would have liked the movie more if it had been much more realistic. In yes, other words, what would time. really happen exactly. if a little kid were left home alone? And the whole business of the burglars trying to break in, and he contrives a very elaborate string of uh, uh, booby traps right. and uh, trick ropes That's going right. here and there and little fireworks that are going to go off and so forth right. to make life hard for them. Uh, these booby traps are nothing that any eight-year-old kid couldn't make if he had hundreds of thousands of dollars <laughs> and the special effects department of a movie working for him. <laughs> right. It's totally unrealistic. Right. And because it goes into that weird subplot of involving the burglars and the booby traps and so forth, it lost my interest. Yeah. What would happen if an eight-year-old really were left home alone for three days? That would be a good well, and I was all excited because that, of course, was one of my, and I'm sure everyone else's big fears. Sure. When you're, I mean, when your parents go out the first time and there's and there's no babysitter, mm -hmm. that is a big moment in every kid's life. And I thought this movie was going to tap into it, and instead we get slapstick and we get a phony thing with a mass murder. Ozzy's tarantula is fast approaching, so we better start talking about each movie. So here goes Home Alone. Um, so when bratty eight-year-old Kevin McAllister, played by Macaulay Culkin, acts out the night before a family trip to Paris, his mother, played by Catherine O'Hara, makes him sleep in the attic. After the McAllisters mistakenly leave for the airport without Kevin, he awakens to an empty house and assumes his wish to have no family has come true. But his excitement sours when he realises that two con men played by Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern, planned to rob the McAllister residence and that he alone must protect the family home. So the original Home Alone grossed a very healthy 476 million US dollars worldwide and was the top grossing movie of 1990 and it became the highest grossing live action comedy until the release of The Hangover Part 2 in 2011. Uh, so Home Alone was the number one film at the box office for 12 consecutive weeks from its release weekend of November the 16th to the 18th 1990 all the way through to the weekend of February the 1st to the 3rd 1991 which is incredible and it was removed from the top spot when Julia Roberts's thriller Sleeping with the Enemy opened with 13 million. I love that film. Remember seeing yeah, that at the sure. cinema. 
Yeah, I love that film. Yeah. But you couldn't get a more different movie replacing it at the top of the chart. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, in terms of critic and audience ratings for the original, so it has a 67% fresh Rotten Tomatoes score, a 63 out of 100 critic meta score on IMDb. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes audience score it is a high 80%, and the similar audience score on IMDb is 7.6 out of 10. And in summary, Home Alone is an even but frequently funny premise stretched unreasonably thin, is buoyed by Macaulay Culkin's cute performance and strong supporting stars. So the original movie, Paul, do you remember where you, you first seen it? Yes, yeah, I think I didn't see it in the cinema, actually. I think I saw it in video. Uh, do you know, in fact, I'm sure, did we not watch it? No, I'm thinking about it. Did you, did you not watch it in Jersey like the, the next summer? No after? idea. I thought I maybe seen it yeah, on I... Sky Movies, maybe um, maybe a year or two after. I seen part two first. I'm sure. Yeah. At cinema. I'm sure we maybe saw it on video. I remember seeing it on video, but the second. I remember going to see the second one absolutely. But the yeah, I just thought it was really. It was kind of like a sleeper hit, really, wasn't it? Because. Mm-hmm. I don't think that much was expected of it, and it became this like iconic film that I think people. It's a it's a good example in this, and similar to Die Hard, that although it's a Christmas film, it's one of, it's one of the rare Christmas films that you could watch. Well, that's what I was saying. The first time I saw it was in the summer, and it was equally as good. Uh, so it's one of these films that are timeless that you could watch any time. Mm-hmm. But there is something special about watching it on Christmas Christmas time. But uh, yeah, it's 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 an excellent. Uh, Excellent film. I think it was was it maybe Macaulay Culkin's second film because he was in he was in Uncle Buck before that. John Candy, of course, he was in this. Uh, but no, a very good film. Yeah, I think uh, for me as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I first seen it on Sky Movies in the early 1990s. And yeah, it's a funny movie. It just it's timeless, isn't it? Sleeper hit at the time. It's an evergreen mm-hmm. classic. Great to watch um, at Christmas and. I mean, what what makes it a special movie? I mean, for me, one of the, the best things about it is the casting is spot on. Because mm. even the minor... Yeah. Uh, and oh, Casting and writing. Obviously, you've got John Hughes, who is very much um, an icon of the 80s. You know, the creator, director of things like Pretty in Pink, uh, Breakfast Club, and so on. And mm. so, obviously, he's created, he's written here... Um, a great movie and the, the casting complements it. I think even the minor roles in this are memorable. Mm. I think you, if you think of yeah. Uncle Sorry. Frank as an example, right? It, you know, Everybody's got knows somebody like Uncle Frank. Oh, exactly, you know? yeah. He's sponging off his brother. Brilliant. Um, yeah. So you've, and, and you've, or for example, somebody like Buzz, the brother. Yeah, everybody knows a Buzz. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's just really good casting as well uh, and of course the the trump card or maybe the two trump cards so to speak are Macaulay Culkin uh, who because I think m- most child actors there, there is a tendency that you want to slap them they can be they can be too sweet and sickly um, or they can or and or unlikable and Macaulay Culkin just He's, he is funny, but he's likable. Uh, so the casting of him mm-hmm. is is obviously a masterstroke. And I think also the Wet Bandits. Yeah, uh, good. Again, they're, they're, they're brilliant. And they're, they're like something from a Tom and Jerry cartoon, the, the kind of exactly. things they that's go what through. I, that's what I was going to say. So it's like a live-action cartoon. So the casting's fantastic. What, what else do you reckon uh, or, or you think makes this... Uh, Classic. The music. Yeah. Uh, John Williams at his best again. Just it's lovely, the music, and I, I suppose it's quite atmospheric when he goes to the church and he is it light a candle or something and the music's on. And as, as much as it's a comedy, there's some real moments in it as well where it's quite emotional. He's thinking about his family. And it's almost like, I suppose, when you're younger, oh, I hate people in my family and I don't like them. And 
it, but it's not until you maybe don't have them that you realise that you take it for granted. And uh, so there's a real, as much as it's a comedy, there's a real poignancy mm-hmm. to it as well. But it's just, it's just really well done, and it's got a good mixture of humour, and yeah, it's just a real fun film, and it obviously that influenced many films going on as well because we think about the end of Skyfall Home Alone influenced that, mm. <laughs> all the traps and yeah. stuff I think the, <laughs> so, yeah. you're right about the music though and, and obviously John Williams is a, mm. a genius but also in addition mm. to his orchestral score I think the actual music cuts he used in the film are yeah. great as well, I think maybe most notably um, Baby Please Come Home for, you know, uh, for Christmas is yeah. uh, a great example. So yeah, really good use of of incidental music uh, in it too. And I suppose when you think about the the plot of the movie, it is if you're a child, it's it's a bit of wish fulfillment, isn't it? You're left alone in a yeah. big house where you can just do what you want, eat what you want, stay up as late as you want. And I think when you're a kid, that's the dream, isn't it? And the novelty wears off, isn't it? It's like that old saying. Be careful what you wish for. Mm-hmm. You know, and it, it's a bit like that. Yeah, and it's all good at the start. Yes, <laughs> and I, I suppose another thing is when when you're younger, there's always maybe somebody in the neighbourhood that maybe you're afraid of, and in this one you've got old man Marling. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, <laughs> which is good. That, yeah. that, that was a nice touch in the movie. I think Kevin speaks to him, and mm-hmm. and obviously you see old man Marling make up with his son, and see his grandkids at the end. One of the funniest bits for me is when he's in the shop and where's your mum? He goes, I can't tell you because you're a stranger. <laughs> I just thought it was really quite funny. It was quite yeah, funny. I know, I know. It's like a wee, like a wee, ma- a wee old man almost. It's quite funny. I know. So Ben, what's your thoughts on the first Home Alone movie? It's really good. It's one of my favourite movies and I've watched it a lot. Yeah, what do you like about it? It's fun, but also serious at the same time. Yeah? Yeah. And what's your favourite moment from it? Uh, when the mum comes home. Yeah? Uh-huh. Why, why is that your favourite bit? Because it's happy. Yeah? And what about all the different traps Kevin lays? Do you have a favourite from, the, from them? Uh, <clears throat> I don't know which one's my favourite. Maybe the, the, what was it, the pin on the floor. Oh, yeah, right, he stands, stands, yeah. yeah, okay. And the first Home Alone movie, Prime Cut or Awful? Prime Cut. Hiya, pal. Take the halls with Marv and Harry. Yes! Make their Christmas not so merry. Give them bricks and give them riches. One more Christmas in the trenches. Toss some paint cans down to greet them. Send the toolbox down to meet them. Serve the nails for Christmas dinner. Kevin is declared the winner. May I do the thinking, please? Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. You weren't after shave? That's kerosene. Now, why would anybody soak a rope in kerosene? Merry Christmas. Christmas is coming, and uh, one of my favorite scenes you do in Home Alone 2 is when you're in the toy store. I love that. If you could have anything in the world for Christmas, Macaulay, what would you most like to have? Um, I don't know. I haven't picked out anything yet. In the movie, you have a video camera. Do you personally have a video camera? Um, yes, I do. Do you take it on the set? Sometimes. Are you pretty good with it? I'm okay. Okay, huh? What do you like to shoot? People clowning around or what? Just anything. 
And uh, it, how long have you been doing this? Um, I don't know, for a while. <laughs> you got quite a few things, quite a few tapes. Yeah, some of them. Yeah. I gave a marginal thumbs down to the original Home Alone. I really don't like those burglars. This time I appreciated yes. Macaulay Culkin more. He has a special gift. He is positively charming. But this time, too, I felt the burglar scenes were even more annoying. Again, marginal thumbs down for me on Home Alone 2. And I know that every 10-year-old kid in America is going to hate me for it. Well, I won't hate you for it, Gene, because my thumb is not even marginally down. And I'll tell you why. First of all, I didn't even go for the Brenda Fricker scenes because I thought that they went on way too long, were overwritten and treacly and sentimental and shameless in the way that little the little twerp kind of lectures her on the meaning of life and the meaning of truth. And she's so grateful to find out these words of wisdom from his angelic little mouth. And then as far as the burglars are concerned, the violence, which is obviously, you're quite right, modeled on all those cartoons with the Roadrunner yeah. and Wiley Coyote. And they use the wide-angle lens to make right. it seem that things are really coming from a long way down and slamming on top of everyone is really tough stuff. You know, usually live-action versions of cartoons don't work because when flesh and blood is involved, it's not that funny. I do think that this kid is a big talent. Oh, I, mean, I think Macaulay Culkin. I'm not, now, I'm not criticizing Macaulay Culkin, yeah, the actor. I'm criticizing the character, Kevin. Who, who a little bit of, if Kevin goes a long way, I mean, the, the entire scene in that townhouse when he's dropping 50 pound bags That's of cement the on them and tricking them into sticking their heads into exploding toilets and so forth. I mean, this stuff, it may even sound funny when I describe it, but the fact it, is eventually it wears it, you it gets out. real old and it, exhausting. It, it wore me out too. Oh. <laughs> After snarky youth, Kevin McAllister loses track of his father at the airport. He mistakenly gets on a plane headed for New York City while the rest of the McAllisters fly to a very rainy Florida. Now alone in the Big Apple, Kevin cons his way into a room at the Plaza Hotel and begins his usual antics. But when Kevin discovers that the Sticky Bandits, who were previously the Wet Bandits, are on the loose, he struggles to stop them from robbing an elderly man's toy store just before Christmas. So the gross for this movie was $359 million worldwide, and it was the second highest grossing movie of 1992, uh, the top one that year being Disney's Aladdin. So the critic score on Rotten Tomatoes, in fact, boop, boop, boop. the Rotten Tomatoes score for this movie is 35%, which I'm actually quite surprised about. Uh, the critic meta score uh, on IMDb is 46 out of 100. The audience score on Rotten Tomatoes is 62%, and the audience rating on IMDb is 6.8. So, obviously, we've got a, a drop uh, across the board from the first movie. And in summary, a change of venue and more sentimentality and violence can't obscure the fact that Home Alone 2 Lost in New York is a less inspired fax meal of its predecessor. Do you agree with that statement, Paul? No, I, I actually, I think I might like the second one better, actually. Just because, I don't know, it's just because all the focus is always on the first one. And I don't know, I quite like the second one when he's away, he's in New York. And uh, yeah, I think it's possibly a better film. That's in the first one. Yeah, I know we obviously seen this at the cinema, so we've seen this before, Home Alone, mm -hmm. which might have an impact on our thinking. And I was the same as you. I always preferred the second one, but uh, over the last few years, having seen them, I think they're both great, but I probably do have a preference for the first one now. But yeah, I think it's not Christmas without having watched these two movies. They're, they're, they're always mm -hmm. great. And I mean, it is just the first movie in a lot of ways, moved to New York, isn't it? <laughs> mm, and I think, yeah. And I think because the first movie worked, and we've got so much affection for the the characters and the kind of uh, the action and pratfalls, we're we're just happy to to get more of the the same. Although I will say, I think the you filthy animals in this one is funnier than the, than mm. in the first one. Uh, I think the wet bandits are good fun again. 
uh, or from the Sticky Bandits as they're now known in this one, Moshari. Um, and I think the other, some of the other things that I find funny is when the, the parents are telling the police in uh, Florida that they've lost Kevin before. Uh, you know, and they're joking, well, we'll never forget our luggage, you know, touch wood, and the policeman is just looking at them. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I think it's, yeah, it doesn't have the freshness of part one, but it's still a hugely enjoyable, enjoyable movie and a worthy, a worthy sequel to, to the, the original. You got a favourite scene in it, Paul? I, I just quite like it when he's, it's like freedom from when he's, and he's in his, uh, is in the taxi going across the bridge, and uh, it's uh, Darlene Love who did the original uh, "Baby Please Come Home for Christmas" in the sixties. So it's her doing that song. Uh, Don't want to be alone at Christmas. Yeah, it's been used in so, a lot of things. Love actually as well. Yeah, yeah. So that 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 was made for this film. Uh, oh, was it really? So I, I just thought that's quite. Yeah, yeah. Didn't know that. Because she. Yeah, she plays Trish in Lethal Weapon, mm. like uh, Murtoff's wife, so that's Darlene Love. So, uh, yeah, so I just think that bit's nice, yeah. giving that a fresh, you know, new song and just something about the freedom when he's going across. I'm not sure what the bridge, I don't know if it's, mm. I don't know what the bridge is in New York. I can't remember. I don't think it was Brooklyn Bridge. It might be another one, um, but I can't remember off the top of my yeah. head. Another good needle drop is the Tom Petty Christmas song um, when they're taking yeah, off. Yeah, that's a great song, yeah. Good Christmas tune. Yeah, uh, that's a, that a great song. And, of course, we get a, a Donald Trump cameo. That's right, in the hotel, yeah. I think the story behind that is it was his hotel they were filming in and they wouldn't let him film. Right. They wouldn't let them film there unless he got a cameo in the movie. You would, you, you would think he's an attention seeker or something. <laughs> Who would have thought? Yeah, it's funny. It's funny. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and what? How many years? Uh, 20, 20 odd years later. No, but 25 years later, he'd be the president. So Ben, Home Alone 2, the sequel, Lost in New York, how do you think it compares to the first movie? I'd say it's funnier. It's funnier? Yeah. Yeah? What makes it funnier than the first one? The hotel people. Yeah, they're, they're good, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and do you have a favourite moment from it? Uh, the bit where Kevin does the voice recording thing and then the hotel people think they're going to get shot. Oh, yeah. We love you. Yeah. And what do you think of the story compared to the first one? Although it's this pretty much the same, it's like I think it might be better because it's like in New York and it's cool. Okay, so you, you prefer the second one? I think so, yeah. <clears throat> right, so would you say the second one is a a prime cut or awful? awful. Prime cut. It's a prime cut. Ten million dollars for the microchip, Mr. Beaupre. We will find it. Their mission is deadly. It has to be on a plane. We are going to Chicago. Their technology is state of the art. There are 26 miners in the 14 houses we haven't checked. Their strategy is unheard of. We're going to work houses in broad daylight. It's the suburbs. Nobody's home during the day. They've got the perfect plan. That's the house. Tomorrow we hit. He's got the chicken pox. What? And he's home alone. Nobody's going to do anything about this. I'll just have to do it myself. I'll go in the front. Heads up. Ouch. Hi. From John Hughes, the writer and producer of Home Alone. See ya. This Christmas, staying home will become an adventure again. 
Home Alone 3. Wait till you see what I do next. Written by John Hughes. Directed by Raja Gosnell. Let's talk about your movie, Home Alone 3. When you went to audition, what did they have you do? Uh, I think I did the scene with Mrs. Hess. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Just read the scene, or did you have it memorized? Uh, I think I had it memorized. Yeah, okay. And uh, then when you got the role and you started making the movie, what was the most fun you had making this movie? It was probably with the rat, the rat or with the parrot, with Seth or Scarlett or Bosti or E.T. or Roger, since this is his first movie, he's doing pretty good. Did you kind of give him some pointers on what to do and what not to do? Mm, sometimes. Yeah. He knew most of it. And that goes on and on to the point of nausea. If this movie had a theme song, it would be Dumbbells Keep Falling on My Head. The story makes no sense. I feel for every family that's going to be suckered into seeing Home Alone 3. Now, this is going to astound you, but I'm giving the movie thumbs up. It does astound me. Are you okay? Uh, better than you were the day that you liked Starship Troopers. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. Uh, I'll tell you that why was, that I was like exciting. the movie. This movie empowers little kids. This is the one where they finally got it right. I liked it better than the other two. Than the makes, original Home it Alone? Makes, it, little kids love the idea that they can somehow affect the outcome, that they can have uh, uh, power over growing ups. That's that they the can defend one. themselves and be smart and think about things. He hammers and in this in movie, it's one. not as violent as the second one. The kid is charming. He really is a good little actor. And the plot is smarter than we the other We completely disagree. I thought the kid was generic mop top. And I thought that the whole oh, come on, that kid? Yes. Come on. Yeah, there are only two kids. He's very Culkin, good. Culkin's better. And the other thing is, it's the same plot as the first one, only more bumps to the head. The second, they're all the same plot. But well, you just said that this one empowers him more than the other one. Absolutely not that's true. That's the secret of the, that's the, that's why kids love these movies, because they love the fantasy that they have power. But it's overdone. Overkill here. Not for Overkill. A, not for, not for you. Right, let's go on to number three. So when an inept group of criminals tries to get a stolen top secret computer chip through airport security it ends up in a toy car in the luggage of the elderly mrs hess played by marianne seldes unable to promptly retrieve the chip the felons follow hess and the car to her neighborhood after she gives the toy to young alex pruitt played by alex d Linz, who is homesick from school he becomes the target of the criminals. However, the precocious kid is on to their schemes and ready to fight the thieves off. So the gross for this movie um, had plummeted from the previous two down to 79 million worldwide. It was only the 69th highest grossing movie of 1997, the winner that year obviously being Titanic. So the film was nominated for a Golden Raspberry Award for Worst Remake or Sequel, eventually losing the award to Speed 2 Cruise Control, which I've never seen because I remember the... I, mean, I think, I think yeah. Speed, the original, is brilliant. I love that, but I've seen the reviews yeah. for 2 and just thought, nah. <laughs> is it rubbish? Is it Jason... Oh, Patrick. Okay. Jason Patrick. Yeah, that's it. And Sandra Bullock came back, didn't she? Yeah, Keanu Reeves is obviously quite smart mm -hmm. <laughs> not to do it. Uh, I'm guessing it's terrible, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Although, it's, do you know when, you, when you've when you got such low expectations, it can only be better. So yeah. <laughs> it was almost maybe it wasn't as bad as all that. But, well, yeah, not a patch on the first one. Yeah, no, as, as I say, never seen it. Anyway, for Home Alone 3, uh, the critic um, Rotten Tomato score was 29%. The Rotten Tomatoes audience score is way down at 27%. Uh, on IMDb, the audience rating is 4.5. And in summary, McCauley Culkin's precocious charisma is sorely missed in this hollow sequel, which doubles down on the broad comedy while, locking, uh, sorry, while lacking all the hallmarks that made the original a classic. So, what's your recollections of Home Alone 3, Paul? Funnily enough, even though it was filmed seven years after the first one and five years after the second one, it actually looks more dated mm -hmm. <laughs> than, than those. And I guess it's just because, yeah, it was a, didn't have as big a budget, obviously, and obviously Macaulay Culkin. It just doesn't work. It's like, I don't know. 
Greece too, and then they've got like two different characters, and it's such like an iconic film. The original, I suppose, the two Home Alone. You know, you associate Macaulay Culkin, Home Alone. You know, it's uh, yeah, just just poor. Yeah, and it's not the young guy that playing the character in it as well. He's he's quite all right actually, but you can't blame him. <laughs> yeah. What about you? Well, I just watched it for the first time after Christmas. Uh, that's just passed uh, a few months ago and I had low expectations for this I mean we're, uh, I avoided it at the cinema on original release because I remember the trailer <laughs> just looked awful um, and obviously there was no Kevin and so I had very low expectations and um, I was right because I thought it was lame it's a real really bad movie it's everything the first two are not. There's no charm, no feeling, no laughs. I, I genuinely only laughed once in the film. Genuinely laughed once. Uh, and I smiled four times. I was keeping keeping count. Uh, Mrs. Hess was uh, amusing, uh, though. She she got the laugh. Uh, read the welcome to the, the neighbourhood put down. Um and she's the kind of character that wasn't in the first two movies, so that's what maybe made her a bit more interesting. I think Alex D. Lindsay's Alex Pruitt, who's the hero of the piece, just doesn't have the cheekiness of Macaulay Culkin's Kevin. I think the traps he sets up are just paint by numbers. You know, they're, they're just, they're, we've seen it all before. The bad guys are paint by numbers bad guys. Um, I think it just shows you how much you missed. Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern, how much they brought to those first two movies as Marvin Harry. Um, and also, for that matter, the director, Chris Chris Columbus. Um, and I, I thought it was sacrilegious them using the John Williams Home Alone theme at the beginning of the movie. Uh, and you'll also note he, he did not return for the Cedar. <laughs> uh, a funny part, though, is young Scarlett Johansson being in it. That was a surprise. Oh, right. I didn't, didn't yeah, uh, right. I think no, she was Alex's sister in this. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, it's a competently made but bad, bad movie. I'll, I'll, something I'll thankfully never have to watch again. And one hour and 40 minutes, it was one hour and 40 minutes, but I did feel much longer. And it should never have been adorned with the home alone name. So a big thumbs down for me. So, Ben, what's your thoughts on the third Home Alone movie? The first one without Kevin and the McAllisters. It's boring, it doesn't make It's boring, it doesn't make sense. And it's just, like, bad. What makes it bad? Well, the, the bad guys are rubbish, and the traps aren't really that good. And it just seems like, you know, even a Christmas movie. Is there anything positive you could say about it? No. Really? Yeah. What about the old lady in it? Is she not quite funny? No. The nosy neighbour one? Not really. She's funny, Ben. She's not. She's funny. She's not. So I'm guessing you weren't overly disappointed that they never continued the series with the character, the boy that was introduced in the third one? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. And for the third movie then, Ben, is it a prime cut or awful? It was even worse than number four, awful. New on DVD and video, Home Alone, taking back the house. Here they come. You! Hello, Mark. Kevin's back. Kevin? Kevin! Kevin! In the biggest adventure of the year. How awesome! The house is bigger. <laughs> the gadgets are slicker. Door open. Kevin's in charge, and the bad guys haven't learned a thing. Hi, Mommy. It's like he's stalking me. Home Alone, taking back the house, today on DVD and video. You know how in the last movie they couldn't get any of the cast back, so they just wrote new characters? Well, say hello to Kevin McAllister, everybody. Oh yeah, and that's Buzz, and Mom, and Dad. And Viv's transition floats smoother than this. Jesus, Kevin doesn't even look that much older. How much time has passed for all this to happen? Uh, so, Home Alone 4, Take Back the House. So Kevin McAllister, this time played by Mike Weinberg, is upset that his parents got divorced. <laughs> Worse yet, 
things are heating up between his father Peter, played uh, in this movie by Jason uh, Begge, I think it is, and his love interest Natalie, who, played by Joanna Going. Uh, forced to choose where to celebrate Christmas, Kevin begrudgingly decides to go to Natalie's mansion, where the guests include a foreign royal family. Kevin schemes to reunite his estranged parents, and after Marv Merchants, played by French Stewart this time, reappears, he struggles to protect a prince from abduction. And already, even just reading that plot, you're thinking, this sucks. Anyway, uh, this movie grossed nothing because it was made for TV. Uh, the Rotten Tomatoes critic score, Paul, do you want to have a guess? Uh, 10%. Zero. <laughs> Zero, right. <laughs> uh, 24% Rotten Tomatoes audience score and a 2.5 IMDb audience rating. And in summary, Clint Morris at Movie Hole gave the film <laughs> one out of five stars, writing from the unappealing, cheapish opening titles to the murky production values it's immediately obvious Home Alone 4 isn't playing in the same park as its beloved predecessors. Sad. Uh, do you remember anything about this one, Paul? No. <laughs> yeah? <clears throat> uh, no. I... Yeah. yeah. You're the lucky one. It's just a straight... Yeah. <laughs> it's like a straight to TV or DVD. Do you know what? The more the sequels go on, it reminds me of like you have a good like maybe first one and second one. A bit like remember in the early nineties, I'd like was it Problem Child, mm-hmm. and they ended up having more and more, and they ended up each one would go on to TV straight to or straight to video at the time. Yeah, and child, the quality or, just got cringe. or something like Child's Play or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, uh, I I mean it's an awful made for TV sequel, and I first seen it years ago when Luke and Ben uh, bought a, a Home Alone 1 to 4 box set on DVD and I remember at the time thinking there's a Home Alone 4? <laughs> when did that happen? <laughs> and yes uh, obviously uh, the production values are nowhere near the level of the first two, obviously they're playing with a much lower budget uh, but of course you've got the different cast playing the McAllisters which is travesty number one. Travesty number two is having the parents separated. What's that all about? <laughs> um, it looks cheap. The new Kevin's not a patch on Mac- Macaulay Culkin. The acting is TV movie of the week level. There's a weak script. It's cheesy. There's no charm. It just rehashes a lot of the Home Alone tropes. Um, now, they've got Marv in this, who's recast. Now, yeah, it's a strange one, because they've recast Marv, but they've got him dressed like Harry. <laughs> yeah, I've got a picture of it here. I yeah. don't get that at all. And other than the characters having the same names, this this it just isn't a Home Alone movie. Um and he's actually never home alone in this film, so yeah, work that one out. It's just a travesty in all levels and best avoided. Yeah. It's funny, I'm just reading one. <laughs> it's that bad, it's knocking my headphones out. Uh, it's funny what somebody's putting on TV, somebody reviewing it. Home Alone 4 is so bad it makes Home Alone 3 look like a masterpiece. <laughs> and that person is right, yeah. So that brings us to the fourth movie, and now I remember, Ben, that at one point when you were very young, you actually said this was your favourite. Oh yeah, it's, it was so bad it was good, but now I just think it's so bad it was good. Before I thought, I don't know why I liked it yeah. very much, I, I just think it's really bad. And what do you think about the kind of plot, the story decision to have the Kevin's parents separated and obviously recasting the entire family, including Kevin? It's rubbish. It doesn't even make sense. I don't know why the parents got divorced. It was a bit rubbish. 
And it was just, well, they only got divorced, so the story would be, like, make sense. Yeah, and... Still make sense. And what did you think of the kid that plays Kevin in this one? <laughs> Absolute rubbish. Not a fan? No. Okay, so is this a prime cut or awful? Awful. ABC Spark brings you all new family fun. This is totally cool. A world premiere movie event. <laughs> new bad guys and a new hero. The only thing to be afraid of in this house is me. Home Alone, The Holiday Heights, premieres Sunday at 8, only on ABC Spark. Like always, though, I have to ask the foolish question, is there anything of value in this movie? Was this a secret masterpiece that snuck under the radar, and is it even worth finishing that question? You already know the answer is... <laughs> Granted, the director does have a few good movies under his belt, but some not-so-good ones, too. So I'm not holding out much hope. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. Uh, so let's move on uh, to Home Alone 5, The Holiday Heist. So with his parents away, an eight-year-old played by Christian Martin engages in a battle of wits with some thieves played by Malcolm McDowell and Debbie Mazar. So there's no gross for this movie because it was another made-for-TV movie. And the Rotten Tomatoes audience score is 28%. And IMDb audience rating is 3.4. So I think that's actually a little bit up on the, the previous one. And yeah. yeah, Emily Ashby of Common Sense Media awarded the film two out of five stars, writing that although the film was predictable slapstick comedy, it still delivered the laughs. Uh, have you seen this one, Paul? I haven't, no. And, uh, but when I'm looking at it, it it seems to have a quite a decent cast as well. Yeah. You know, you've got Malcolm McDowell, obviously a great actor, and you've got Edward Hasner, who's been a few things, mm -hmm. but Mr. Carson. Yep. And you even got uh, Debbie Mazar, who plays Jessica, and she's been in quite a few films, actually. She was in Empire Records, The Insider. Yeah. So this one feels a bit, a bit more, because this, this was 10 years after the previous one, wasn't it? Yeah, so, um, yeah. yeah, this one's 2012, and yeah. the, yeah, it's, again, I went into this with low expectations, and, and, and I watched it for the first time just before Christmas uh, that's just passed, and from the off, you can tell it's going to be a better movie than the, the previous one. Yes, it's another TV movie, but the production values seem much higher and as you say you, you've got some mm -hmm. serious acting talent in there with the likes of Malcolm McDowell and Ed Asner so yeah it's a decent cast this time um, and thankfully no recasting of the McAllister family it's a new family that's in this and I have to say I, I found it entertaining enough I think the villainous trio are really good value so yeah Malcolm McDowell Eddie Steeples and Debbie Mazar the 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 snow kid neighbor in it is funny. I think si the maybe the best character is <laughs> is Simon, the adult gamer, um, and, <laughs> and the police basically <laughs> eventually track him down, thinking he's up to no good. And uh, I love the hidden room in the basement of the house, which is where the villains are trying to get into. And uh, yeah, the part I I probably least enjoyed was the home alone part with uh, all the traps and. I think because most of that was pretty much recycled, just variations on those from Home Alone 1 and 2. And I have to say, I started to doze off then. That was really uh, obviously towards the, the end of the movie, but everything up to that, I was actually quite enjoying and finding amusing. So it was nice decent. I mean, I wouldn't say, yeah, go out, rush out and watch it. But if it was on TV, yeah, it's, it's decent. So we have the fifth one. And this one, again, there's no McAllister family in this one. It's a new family. Now, I thought this one was actually decent. What did you think? I thought it was really bad. Really? It was boring and just not very engaging at all. Do you not? Was there no redeeming features of it? Uh, nothing off the top of my head. What about the, the guy who's the gamer who's playing... Online with the, the kid that's in it. He's quite funny, isn't he? I can't remember him. Remember the police all turn up at his door? 
I don't know. I can't remember that. No? No. Okay. Uh, but, uh, for me, I thought the supporting cast was good, especially the bad guys. Uh, like like were, some Malcolm McDowell and so on. They were, they were fine. Yeah? Yeah. Not as bad as the ones in 3 or 4, though. What about the traps that are used in, to get the bad guys in this one? Oh, right. I don't really mind of them. So is that a prime cut or awful? Awful. Was the night before Christmas vacation. And the fun was in full swing. You have split our family onto two separate flights. Mom! Max, please! The family left for their big vacation. Is that everyone? The cars are leaving now! But forgot one little thing. Mom? Dad? Uncle Blake? They don't even know I'm here. They don't even know I'm here. My mum and dad have gone to Tokyo. I'm totally on my own. You do realise that my ten-year-old son is at home by himself. You just assumed Max was on the other flight. We didn't take a census. We got reports of suspicious people around 36 Lincoln Ave. I can't go to jail, honey. I wouldn't last 30 seconds in Gen Pop. It's where fresh fish get got. Nobody here is getting got. And we're criminals. I don't think so. This is my house. I have to defend it. Orange stripe, center pocket. <laughs> Ooh. That did not sound right. I am trying to get home to my son. Who is alone. I'm scared. And he needs his mother. Home alone. Oh no! A ladder! You think I'm that stupid? <laughs> yes, I do. Only on Disney Plus. What was it like taking over such an iconic role as the lead in Home Alone? Incredible. It's <laughs> such an honor to be playing this role. I'm very happy and I feel very honored. Also, to be he, here. he's been such a fan since he was a kid. Imagine, since he was a kid. Yeah. Yes. Did you thought when he first introduced to um, Home Alone when I was like 0. 0.9 months old? <laughs> did you feel any pressure? Like, did you feel any pressure, like, taking on this role? Or how did you no. first think about it? <laughs> no, not really. No pressure at all. What a chilled out person. Yeah, I mean, like, this is... Um, I don't have any pressure to like reenact someone because this. Yes, it's not a remake. So that that took off the um, pressure because it is not. Not a sequel. It is not a remake. It is not a reboot. But it is <laughs> in the same universe. That's I was expecting it to be mediocre, and instead I got a total ill-conceived movie that fails to understand what makes Home Alone work, what you want from these movies, and it's in particular frustrating because. It felt like the cast were probably excited that they got to star in a Home Alone movie only to discover it's a, a movie that totally misses the mark and does not understand how to pull out the big family emotions or have slapstick that's actually enjoyable to watch. So we move on to the most recent Home Alone movie, which was made for Disney Plus, and it just came out prior to Christmas 2021, and that is Home Sweet home alone it's obviously the sixth movie in the franchise and um it has max mercer is a mischievous and resourceful young boy who has been left behind while his family is in japan for the holidays so when a married couple attempting to retrieve a priceless heirloom set their sights on the mercer family's home it's up to max to protect it from the trespassers and he will do whatever ever it takes to keep them out Hilarious hijinks of epic proportions ensue, but despite the absolute chaos, Max comes to realise that there really is no place like home sweet home. So, again, no gross for this one. It was made for uh, direct streaming uh, on Disney+. Plus. So, the Rotten Tomatoes critic score, 15%, uh, which is very low, uh, and I'm actually quite surprised by that. The... the Critic Metascore on IMDb is 35 out of 100. The audience score, 
on Rotten Tomatoes is a very low 12%, which again I'm surprised by. And the IMDb audience rating is 3.6, so really very low marks across the board. Uh, and in summary, with a ridiculous story and an obnoxious main character who's harder to root for than the villains, Home Sweet Home Alone is no fun for the whole family. Uh, so I think you have seen this one, Paul, yeah? I've not actually. I know it was on Disney Plus. I haven't, uh, but I know. I know you'd said. Obviously, I'm giving it away, but I know you'd sort of maybe not recommended it, but you quite enjoyed it. You know, looking at the cast here, it's quite a British-based cast because you've got uh, Rob Delaney, who's a comedian. Who's uh, I don't know if he lives in the UK, but he's on a lot of TV in the UK. And you've got Aisling B, who's an Irish actress who's in quite a lot of comedy things on um, British TV. So it's interesting. And you've got uh, Ellie Kemper, who was in uh, Bridesmaids. And also, which I didn't realise, you've got the Buzz, the uh, mm -hmm. Devin Ratney, who plays Buzz, obviously, in the first one. It's him him in the, the present day. So it's, it's quite interesting, yeah. Mm-hmm. What yeah. was his character? What was he doing in the film? He's playing Buzz. Buzz, what was it? Yeah. Yeah. What was the character doing in the film? Like, what, what was, was his... the character doing? He, yeah. um, on the house and estate where the action takes place, he was kind of security. All oh, right. <laughs> yeah. So no, it was, that was a surprise, and it, it is a very good cameo. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think with this, in the first twenty minutes. I had laughed more than in the three previous movies combined. <laughs> For me, it was surprisingly really great fun uh, and funny. Mm. Um, at last, a child actor who's funny and charismatic, just as Macaulay Culkin had been uh, all those years ago. Uh, so you've got Archie Yates as Max. Now, I liked his turn as uh, Yorkie and uh, Taiki uh, Waititi's Jojo Rabbit. And I think... In, across the board here oh, yeah, yeah that, he was in that so the cast I didn't realize that was the same guy yeah, yeah, yeah. so in fact uh, the casting is what really I think elevates this movie over parts three to five there's a lot of excellent actors and obviously predominantly comedians that are known for their TV work and you've mentioned a few of them already like of Rob Delaney and Ellie Camper and I think they two in particular as Pam and Jeff are great in this and you've got an interesting dynamic which hasn't really been explored in the previous movies because um, we're, we're led to believe that Max has stolen something from Pam and Jeff, which he didn't, and Max believes, well, spoiler, and Max believes Pam and Jeff wants to kidnap him to sell him, which they don't. So it's a total misunderstanding. So unlike, say, the first two movies where the wet bandits are the bad guys and we want Kevin to prevail, he's the hero, in this, we actually like both parties and we want both of them to prevail, which is interesting. So uh, I thought the in-laws visiting Pam and Jeff were, were also funny, especially Ali um, Mackey uh, when she was singing on Christmas Eve. Uh, I love the slow motion save of the ugly boy doll near the end and thought the Home Alone trap segment had some good original ideas so overall yeah enjoyed it and we'd be happy to see more featured in the same cast but it looks like the the rest of the world <laughs> doesn't agree with me <laughs> based on what so i've read 3.5 out of 10 or now yeah yeah 3. i i again had low expectations but i just really enjoyed it i thought the cast were really good and it was funny it was genuinely funny Which brings us to the most recent one, uh, Home Sweet Home Alone, which just came out towards the tail end of last year. Now, I actually really liked this, and I was very surprised. What did you think of it? Uh, it was fun. Like, like, not exactly a good movie, but it was like a fun movie. And, yeah, it was funny, and uh, the people, that the bad guys, well, they weren't really bad guys, but still... They were quite good as well. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Like, not the best movie ever, but pretty good. Yeah, I thought f for me that what made it quite interesting compared to all the others 
is that we had the supposed bad guys are not really bad and you're kind of rooting for them as well. Yeah. So I thought that was uh, quite quite interesting. So is it a prime cut or awful? Mm, I'd say awful because it wasn't it's middle ground, isn't it? Yeah. We need to have a middle rating. What can we have as a middle rating? All right. All right. Yeah. But, yeah, I'd say this one's awful since it wasn't really needed. <sighs> okay. Well, Ben, thank you very much for your comments today. You're welcome. So, guys, let's rank the Home Alone movies in order of our preference. So I'll maybe kick us off here, and I will do it in reverse order. So, my least favourite is Taking Back the House, which is the fourth one. Uh, at second bottom, fifth place, would be Home Alone 3. In fourth place would be The Holiday Heist, which was the fifth movie. And in third place, I would have Home Sweet Home Alone. In second place, Home Alone 2. And in top place, I would have the original Home Alone. So, Paul, you've only seen a couple of these, so your <laughs> your ranking should be pretty easy to do then. Yeah, I, just from what I know, and I'd say Home Alone 2 first, Home Alone first one second, I, I was just think, thinking there, I was thinking about Home Alone 2, I was thinking that'll be 30 years old this year, goodness. That's right. Uh, so Home Alone 2 would be second, and the third one would be the, the one that was just talked about, the Christmas, the latest one there that was released on Disney Plus. And uh, the fourth one for me would be the fifth film. It's quite complicated, this. And the and then the third one would be the, the fifth in the list. And then the last one in the list would be four. Okay. Thanks for that. Um, so not too dissimilar. Yeah, pretty similar. Uh Our parents and family have returned safely, so it's time to go and celebrate Christmas. Before we go though, if you want to contact us, please join our Facebook group. Remember to subscribe to the podcast and leave us some good reviews. Our next episode will be based on the Rocky franchise, so picking up from Rocky 1 through to Rocky Balboa. So thanks to you for listening, and until next time, Keep trimming.